My dad. <laughs> How long you been working for the school district? School district or the city? The city. Fifty years. You been working for the school district for fifty years? City park and rec for fifty years. Man, that's a long time. That's all <laughs> that's down there longer than Deer was a school teacher. Yeah. This summer this summer made fifty years. Fifty years? I so what in nineteen sixty nine. You started. So, what was the what was the minimum wage? No, nah, what did you start off doing? Uh, coaching a softball team. That's like the then from there you got into the school district. No, I got in the school district later, and the principal from Grant came and got me and told me he wanted me to be a campus monitor. Yeah. And so that Friday he saw me. That Monday I was working as a campus monitor. I did that for a year, and then I went to the maintenance department. Man, my earliest memories of you was driving this big old tractor. He was he worked at every school I went to. As long as I went <laughs> in the school district, yeah. Hold on. As long as I was in the school district, hold on. Damn. This is my dad, y'all. My dad, hella old. Look at him. <laughs> he looked like a fat faced me. That's what, this is what I'm gonna look like in, four, in, in thirty. How much older is you than me, Dad? I'm sixty eight. Sixty eight. So forty, forty. So you twenty eight years older than me. Yeah. That's my passion. He still plays softball. <laughs> so my dad been working for the school district for over fifty years. City, the city. The city for over fifty years, and he also been doing like late night programs where he helped where he helped the kids. He didn't literally watch families grow up in the Del Paso Heights neighborhood. I'm on fifth generation kids. Fifth generation of kids, so that's the kids, kids, kids. <laughs> but my dad is a staple in Del Paso Heights, California. And every single person damn near in this hood that has anything to do with school, sports, or anything with grant related, they know my dad. All I do is when I pull up in the neighborhood and say, you know, Curtis, they be like, I thought you looked familiar because I look just like my dad. And he been yes, he do. And so how long you been opening up the gym? I remember you used to open up the, the basketball gym. Yeah, I did that for 38 years. 38 years. Yeah. Used to be making hella money selling them sodas, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dad used to have a truck with the sodas in the back. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, I used to go to that gym. What was it, Grand West? Mm hmm Grand West. I used to go to that gym. And the last time I went, somebody died. That was crazy. Yeah. You remember that night, Dad? Yeah. I, mean, I was on a pass from Group Home. Gary, Pop, uh, Gary Gordon. Gary Gordon. Pops came to get me on a pass. And Gary came down the basketball court, right? He, yeah. he bumped into me. He bumped into me. He got back up, and he went back down the court. And he, uh, Did he make a layup? No, he just went down field. Uh, he just went down. But then, then he had a layup, though, where he used to go up like this and then lay it. Mm -hmm, probably. He had a cold layup. Yeah, he just had just signed a contract for a singing contract. Go on tour. Wow. Yeah. So you've been... You've been Okay, so let, tell me what you think about this when it comes to Del Paso Heights. Huh? That's where I use bathroom. Yeah, right there to the left. Go right, go around, right, right around that wall. All right, thanks, homeboys. Okay. All right. He looks like he had a rough night. Mm -hmm. Man, so when it comes to Del Paso Heights, you just literally saw a lot of people grow up. But yeah. I have this theory that everybody in Del Paso Heights is related. What do you think about what do you think about that theory that that theory right there about everybody in Del Paso Heights being related somehow some way? That's true. That's true. Cause there's a lot of connections in this in this hood that you wouldn't even know about. I had kids come to the gym didn't know they was relatives until they mentioned somebody's name. All right. So how many families do you think we related to in Del Paso Heights? Oh, we related to the Browns, the Coopers, the Murphys, the Fries, the Beavers. Uh, who else? No, I said Fries, the Matheny's. We related to the Augustus? Huh? We related to the Augustus? No, but they grew up across the street from my my uh, my auntie and my uncle. And that's just that's just your side of the family. Yeah. 
So then the other side of the family too. But still, I, I still I just think everybody is related somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. If you get to talking and start asking questions, you'd be surprised what you might find. You didn't see a lot of deaths in the, in the, in the heist too. Oh huh? yeah, oh yeah. A lot of people, you know, that got shot. Oh, okay. do you remember the magic bullet? Remember the magic bullet? What? His best friend was killed by a magic bullet. Fat rap. Oh, yeah. He was in the back of his truck getting ready for little league practice. When a bullet came from all the way over from Marysville Boulevard all the way over to Grand High School baseball field. And he Spray was in the bullet. trunk. That was crazy. Bullet hit him in the back of the head. While he was low, while he was getting getting the the softball, mm -hmm. I mean the baseball equipment, mm -hmm. cold thing. They call that the magic bullet. Yeah, man. My hey, I thought one thing about my dad is I always like, always knew that anything Del Paso Heights, my dad know. Anything Del Paso Heights, my <laughs> dad know. He been man, you was at. Music. I don't know. I can find out real quick. <laughs> man. <laughs> You been you use that grant before they had they had real helmets. They had use that grant when they had the leather helmets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I was at Grant, you know, they didn't have the CIF and all that. They just had the city championship, which we won three years in a row. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember when y'all played like, Long Beach or something. That was that was not too long ago. But see, we back when I was going to school, they didn't we didn't have that. Mm. We didn't go out of town and play football. Our city championship was around here. And we had a turkey game every year, too. Like the turkey bowl? Yeah. Uh, Sack, Sack High against Grant. They played every year. One year mm. at Grant, next year at Sack High. Grant, Sack High. They did that I wonder if the rival has anything to do with that right there. Like the rival between uh, uh, Del Paso Heights and Oak Park. I wanted to do it has a stem with the high schools. Because uh, turkey, turkey bowl, the turkey, <laughs> that, that's, that's a hood you know, against that, a hood. That, that, Oak Park, Grant, Heights, and Hike thing go back a long way. Even before I was coming up, it goes. It just, it was just something that went that went on. So tell me this, Dad. What is it in you that makes you, <coughs> that makes you like, could help the kids? Because a lot of kids have all watched you, like you, like as long as these kids yeah, can remember, it, they've seen the you. Love, the love, with, the love of kids' faces. You know, the love of helping, being able to help kids do something. Learn how to play ball and stuff. I taught my two best friends how to play ball, and they both got drafted. Is that right? You used to be friends with Ricky Jordan. Leon Lee, Taylor Duncan. What's the other one? Greg Vaughn. Greg Vaughn. Um, uh, the councilman, Wayne Warren. What? He was one of my, He was one of my baseball players, one of my softball players. You're talking about Wayne Warren, the councilman? Yeah. yeah. Wow. The principals at Grant mm -hmm. all grew up in my gym. All wow. three of them. Wow. Yeah, Mervyn Brookins, he's another one. He grew up in the gym that's doing things for the community. You know, so I, I, I guess I, I rubbed off on them some kind of way. Yeah. Because they all working with kids. Yeah. They all doing something with kids, so. That's what it's about. Know, At the end of the day, it's about may not been, I may not been, I mean, doing a lot for them, but I was always there for them. Yeah. That gym was always open for them. Yeah. If they didn't have nowhere to go, they knew they could come to the gym. And you didn't seen a lot of celebrities come to that gym, too. Yeah. Uh, Name some of the celebrities that, that they came to your gym uh, that you watched. Otis grow up. Thorpe came, used to come to the gym. Uh, Carlos Williams from the Kings used to come to the gym. Uh, I had um, Robert Brookins, who played keyboard for Earth, Wind, and Fire. I had. Um, what about athletes? Athletes? I had the Huh? Thank you for making me talk of this. Okay. God bless you. You too. God bless law enforcement. Oh, okay. I love all of you. Okay. God bless Feather X. All right. Uh, Ontario Smith, Ricky Jordan, Shaq Thompson. Oh, Shaq Thompson. Uh, yeah. All them guys grew up in the gym. You know, they, you know. You know, and uh, had a lot of athletes. I love all black people for life. Feather X for life. Yeah. And discussion. You know, so I had kids grow up there. And Ricky Jordan, me and him used to play strikeout in the gym when everybody left. Is that at, right? At night. And he ended up playing in the World Series. 
Ricky yeah. Jordan, he played yeah. for what, Montreal? Yeah, and James Mouton. No, he played for the Phillies. Yeah, James Mouton. He, he ended up playing for the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. He was my shortstop on my little, team, little league team. Ricky was my first baseman. Mm. You know so you had, so you actually coached athletes that are long retired. Yeah. Dad, you hella old. You hella old, dad. <laughs> But, you know, I made it. That's, That's the right. key. I made it this far. You know, the dying rate now is about 15, 13 to 15. You might not make it. Yeah. You, with the, the way this world is going today. Yeah. You know, you used to go right up on a car and, and look over and say hi. You do it now, you better watch your back. Yeah, for real. <laughs> There's you know a, like I mean? like like where we're at right now. There really like used to be a lot of people. Like this park used to be a lot of people yeah. in this park. Now this park is a ghost town. Yeah, that's where the police came through and handed out that letter about all the fines and citations they're gonna start giving out after after somebody got killed in the park. Wow. When we really needed before that happened, they would just pass by. Right. You know. They know. They already know. I'm known for my phone falling. Yeah, you know. So, what it, it took that for? It took that for them to, to finally come out here and do something. Yeah. Uh. So they got cameras. This is Hagenwood. They got cameras all in this park now. I heard. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So you, I would imagine, like everybody left. They are somewhere yeah, else. They at Mama Mark's park. <laughs> Mama and, Mark's, uh, and I don't know how long they're going to be in Mama Mark's Park because the community is, ain't, ain't having it because they're in the middle of the community now. Yeah, yeah. And so, they, you know, I don't know how much long they're going to be able to put up with that. Uh, that's crazy. You know, so. Hey, well, you know, Dad, I, I just wanted to, like, put spotlight on you because you've been, you're giving back to the community in a lot of ways, man. I think people just need to know. How big of a heart my dad has, and how how long he's given back to the community. So I just want to shine, shine focus on my dad and say, Dad, I'm pretty sure the community. I speak for the community, and I say they appreciate what you've done and the service that you've given to many and many and many generations of children. Thank you. All right, Dad. Love you, love you Dad. <laughs> All right, Dad. Daddy.